This is me, Nasani, Faculty, Silver Hills Public School, Department of Science. Let us look into a new lesson, Fiber to Fabric. Today we are going to discuss history of clothing, fiber and its uses, making fabric from fiber, characteristics of wool and their origin, rearing and breeding, processing of wool to fabric, then finally silk fabrics and seri culture. Let us think over all these points. Food and shelter are important for us to survive. We cover our body with clothes. Clothes are as important as food and shelter for us. People wear different kinds of clothes in different occasions. When we go to a party, we can see that variety of clothes that people they wear. When we go to different states, there also you can see different kinds of clothes. When we go to Delhi, we can see that summer and winter are unusually harsh. People they wear woolen clothes in winter and cotton clothes in summer. When we go to different states and re different regions, we can see that they wear clothes depending upon the climatic conditions. India is well known for its unity in diversity. When we look at the photographs of our gra grandparents, we can see that the type of clothes that they wore in their time are entirely different than the type of clothes that we wear. When we look at the people, primitive men, they covered their body using leaves, animal skin and bark of trees. It is believed that 40,000 years before they made needle out of bones of animals and they started stitching animal skin and leaves together. Agricultural development and industrial revolution increased the production of cotton fibers and increased the production of clothes and textile industry is much popular. A large number of people is working in the field of textile industry. India exports major textile goods throughout the world. Look at the clothes that modern men wear and see. Now we are going to discuss about fibers. We know that clothes, origin of clothes come from fibers. Fibers are hair like thin strands and yarn is made from fibers. Fibers are twisted and made into yarn. And this yarn is weaved and made into fabrics. There are two types of fibers. They are natural fibers and artificial fibers. Natural fibers are obtained from plants and animals and synthetic fibers are made by human beings by chemical methods. Examples are nylon, rayon, polyester. Though synthetic fibers are not eco-friendly, still these fibers are popular and because the reason is they are durable, maintenance is very simple and, and cost is bearable. And for example, when we compare nylon net and a cotton net for fishing, which one is preferable? We know that cotton absorbs more water than nylon and nylon is waterproof and light weighted. And fishermen normally they choose uh, fibers made of uh, uh, nylon only. Here we get uh, natural fibers mainly from uh, animals and plants. Now, let us think over, why do we use synthetic fibers? The reason I said synthetic fibers, they are durable, they cost, cost is less and maintenance is easy. Then what fab fabric do you prefer in desert safari? That is simple, everyone knows we wear cotton clothes because cotton clothes, uh, there are small, tiny, microscopic holes are there, pores are there, through that air circulation happens and we feel comfortable while wearing cotton clothes in a desert safari. 
what fabric do you prefer in arctic it's simple we prefer woolen clothes why the reason is that wool is a bad conductor of heat we have a body warmth that body warmth should not escape from our body so woolen clothes they trap heat in between woolen cloth and our body you have learned in class 7 the lesson heat you have learned heat always flows from higher temperature to lower temperature so normally the temperature of our body is more than that of a surrounding temperature so our body's temperature is trapped in between the woolen cloth and a our body warmth is trapped inside the woolen clothes because woolen fibers are bad conductors of heat. So we feel comfortable and we feel warm while wearing woolen clothes. Next let us look into another topic. This we have discussed in class 6 about plant fibers. Cotton fibers are obtained from fruit of cotton plant called cotton balls. Same way coir is obtained from the cover of coconut means husk of coconut and jute from the stem of jute plant and flax from the stalk of the plants and hemp from the stalk of hemp plants. Here I am not going to discuss about plant fibers in detail because we have learned about in detail about this plant fibers in class 6. Now today we are going to learn about animal fibers. Let us look into another slide. Animal fibers. Wool and silk are the main animal fiber. Wool. When I say the name wool, what appears into your mind? A sheep with full of fur on its body. Why wool? Because wool do not wrinkle easily. What are the characteristics of a wool? Wool is durable and elastic. It's a bad conductor of heat. I explained about it. And it absorbs moisture to a great extent. Next, there are two types of wool found on a sheep's body. First one is the coarse wool. That is coarse outer wool found on the outer covering of a sheep then when when we go deep inside the uh, deep inside the coarse wool when we reach at the skin we can see that the hair that grows uh, un, near to the skin are soft and fine under hair so there are two types of wool on a sheep's body they are the coarse beard hair and the soft fine and fine under hair and look at these two sheep. This is a normal sheep. And this is merino sheep. Best quality wool is obtained from the sheep, merino sheep. Besides sheep, we get wool from goats also. Here, Angora goat. Angora goats are mostly found in the region of Angara of Turkey. A very soft and lustrous wool. And the name of the wool is mohair. Next wool we are going to discuss is cashmere wool. Cashmere wool is obtained from cashmere goat. They are found in Tibet and China. And they are, the wool is soft and warm. Soft and warm wool are obtained from cashmere goats. These wool are expensive and rare. We get pashmina shawls are made from cashmere goats. And uh, these wool are rare and expensive next besides goats we get wool from camels annually we get almost 12 to 15 kilograms of wool from a male camel and 6 to 8 kilograms of wool from a female camel best quality wool is obtained from bactrian camels found in mongolia siberia and china and these are the species of camel. They are alpaca, llama, vicuna, belong to camel family and they are mostly found in South America. A very fine, lustrous and light weighted wool is obtained from these species. And uh, the pictures are given here. Look at a Bactrian camel. 
and lama vicuna and alpaca next besides all these we get a wool from angora rabbit found in angara the speciality is a very fine silky wool called angora wool is obtained from angora rabbit finally yak we get wool from yak also yak is found mostly in ladakh and tibet these are the pictures of uh, angora rabbit and uh, yak next what's your dress made up of children just to check huh? which material is used to make this dress and which fiber is used for making this dress are all your clothes made up of same material no of course no we use different types of fibers we have learned recently there are two types of fibers animal fibers and plant fibers and also synthetic fibers okay so dresses clothes are not made of same material okay next comes rearing and breeding of sheep what is meant by rearing bringing up taking care of a sheep farmers they rear sheep for meat milk and wool the process of domestication and raising up of a sheep is known as rearing in india sheep are reared in hilly regions okay and uh, such as jammu and kashmir himachal pradesh uttaranchal arunachal pradesh sikkim they are reared in plains also gujarat rajasthan punjab haryana okay sheep are herbivores preferably feed on grass weeds jowar oil cakes what is what are oil cakes oil is extracted from pulses and left over uh, pulses are called oil cakes and a mixture of oil cakes and minerals pulses are fed to the sheep and their sheds are well maintained with thatched roof and they use gunny bags for covering their shed and well ventilated also sheep are prone to a bacterial disease called anthrax so they are well taken care of now next we have seen different types of dogs around you labrador pomeranian so many types of breeds of dogs are seen around you same way sheep also come in different breeds what is breeding selecting parents having desirable qualities here what do we mean by desirable qualities desirable qualities are resistance to disease and tolerance to environmental conditions and having good quality wool these are the desirable qualities that farmers expect from sheep and they select sheep which are having these qualities and they can expect these these desirable qualities on their lambs or offsprings born to them to improve the production and quality of wool some sheep are selectively bred with other sheep some sheep are selectively bred with the other sheep to get a desirable qualities the desirable qualities i meant and i discussed here are resistant to disease tolerance to climatic conditions and good quality wool so that these desirable characters can be taken into consideration while selecting the breeds they are resistance to diseases tolerance to uh, environmental conditions and appearance of the wool so next comes selective breeding the process of selecting parents for obtaining desirable characters in their offspring is called selective breeding the bred animals are known as breeds now let's have a look at the indian breeds of sheep we have lohi rampur busher nali bakharwal marwari patanwadi they are found in different states lohi the lohi god lohi breed is found in rajasthan and punjab rampur busher is found in uttar pradesh and himachal pradesh nali is found in rajasthan and haryana 
Punjab and Bakharwal is found in Jammu and Kashmir, Marwari is found in uh, Gujarat, Patanwadi is found in Gujarat. And the quality of uh, wool obtained from each breed is different. Lohi gives good quality wool and Rampur Bushar gives a brown fleece. Fleece means here wool only. Nali gives carpet wool, coarse, rough wool and Bakharwal gives wool and shawls and used for getting wool and shawls. Marwari gives coarse wool and Patanwadi gives uh, wool for making hosiery. What is hosiery? Stockings, vest and briefs. You can imagine that this wool, this wool are soft. Okay. Then when we look at the picture of uh, world, the breeds found in different parts of country are Merino, Barbado, Damara, Kathadin, Targi. The name of the place where it is found, Merino sheep are found in Spain, Barbado is found in Texas, Damara is found in Angora and Namibia and Katadin is found in United States of America, Targi is found in United States of America. Merino sheep gives fine quality wool, Barbado gives a short and coarse wool, Damara gives a short wool, Katadin gives thick and coarse wool, Targi is fine and long wool. These are the breeds found in different parts of the world. Now it is time for learning the process of making wool. First step is shearing. Shearing is just a shaving, shaving of a, or cutting of a hair from sheep's body and this is done annually in summer season. They use razors and in 1994 Australian scientists developed a new technique called bioclip. What do they do? They inject a hormone in sheep's body and they insert that sheep in a wire net. And after three weeks, automatically the, those wool peel, gets peeled off from their body. And why this wire net? That wool should not scatter everywhere. So to uh, trap wool in that nets, farmers, they put sheep in that wire nets. So the method is called bioclip method. Next, scoring. Wool may contain grease, dust, dirt, bacteria. So this wool should be cleaned well in big tanks in hot water and using detergents. The process is called scoring. Next, spoiled wool may be there, useless wool may be there. They are discarded and uh, removed and uh, sort. this process is called uh, sorting. Next is grading. We have learned that coarse outer wool is there and soft inner wool is there. So, and the long wool is there and short wool is there. These wools are separated, graded according to their texture and length and appearance. That uh, process is called uh, grading. Next is coloring. We know that uh, wool comes white in color, black in color. Actually wool comes in br brown color also, yellow color also. And in markets we are getting different colored wool. The next process is dyeing, coloring. Next, after dyeing it is sent for a drying. Then dried wool is collected and sent for a spinning for making yarn. Next step is making uh, clothes, wool and fabrics called the process is called weaving or knitting. Next, these are the processes. Here, shearing is done and next step is scoring and sorting and grading. Then dyeing, after dyeing they are sent for a drying. Next, this one is a weaving and knitting and finally wool. We get wool and these are the pictures how farmers they do and look at the plight of farmers see uh, they are exposed to because I have told you uh, these um, uh, sheep are prone to a bacterial disease called anthrax so the air around them farmer and goat may contain bacteria and uh, these uh, bacteria may pass on to uh, these farmers those who are involved in this uh, uh, see process and also they have to do a tedious 
tedious work and they have to stand for a long period of time and this causes um, back pain and uh, you see machine sound also exposure to the machine sound for a long period of time may cause uh, say hearing loss. So these are called the occupational hazards. We know that each and every okay, occupation has its own hazards. For example, when we consider about uh, fishermen, we know that the uh, hazards they uh, face while uh, going for a fishing. They have to see the condition of the sea, wind, etc., etc. Same way, each uh, occupation has its own uh, difficulties. So these are the uh, health hazards in wool industry. For example, anthrax I explained, and irritation in eyes because um, they use uh, dyes. Dyes are chemicals. They are exposed to these kinds of dyes. Inappropriate ventilation also. They work in a closed. Uh, uh, rooms and uh, this will cause uh, inappropriate ventilation and uh, uh, this may cause uh, uh, so many health problems on them and uh, hearing loss by, by loud noise made by machines. Okay. Now it is time for explaining about silk. We have discussed there are two types of uh, animal fibers, first one wool. We have discussed about wool, wool and how wool is processed, how fabric is made out of wool and different animals they give wool. Besides sheep, we get wool from goat, camel, rabbits, then yak, all these give wool. Next, silk is an animal fiber. Silk worms are the larvae of larvae or caterpillars of silk moths. The most widespread silk is obtained from the silk moth called Bombyx mori. What are the characteristics of silk? When I say silk, the lustrous silk comes into your mind. It is lustrous and soft. It's a bad conductor of heat again it is very elastic thus resist creasing it is as strong as steel wire uh, of the same diameter it has a peculiar natural shine and uh, can be colored easily it is resistant to dust now coming to the life cycle of a moth silk moth first silk worm lays eggs hundreds of uh, eggs a silk worm lays at a time and first stage is uh, these uh, eggs are allowed to hatch. Next, after hatching, after hatching, a worm comes out. They are called silkworm or larvae. And these larvae feed on mulberry leaves. It takes 25 to 30 days. And a stage will come, then larvae stops eating. And this time, this larvae stops eating mulberry leaves. Then next step is preparation of a cocoon. What is cocoon? What is pupa? What is the next stage? That's what we are going to see now. The life cycle of a silk moth. Female silk moth lays eggs. And at a time, they lay hundreds of eggs. And these eggs hatch out and a caterpillar, caterpillar small worm comes out we call it as larvae also and this larva sheds their skin in four stages and they feed on mulberry leaves a stage comes when they stop feeding mulberry leaves then that stage caterpillar spins a cocoon of a silk threads around itself. Caterpillar spins a cocoon of silk threads around it. That is, a secretion comes out of their salivary gland found on both sides of their head. Now we can see a secretion comes out of a larvae. That secretion is made of a protein. Made of protein. When it comes out, that secretion is a juicy substance. It comes out when it is exposed to air, it hardens. And this, this secretion covers the caterpillar and forms layers around the caterpillar. Forms layer around the caterpillar. We call it as 
cocoons and the caterpillar inside is called a pupa and they remain like this for 25 to 30 days again then at this pupa undergoes metamorphosis and changes into adult silk moth and this silk moth breaks open this cocoon and comes out this is the life cycle of a silk moth again the adult silk moth lays eggs and a caterpillar comes out and this caterpillar undergoes four stages molting stages what is molting stages shedding of skin four times it sheds out its skin when and also that time they feed on mulberry leaves and this stage comes when they stop feeding mulberry leaves then we can see that uh, a secretion comes out of caterpillar salivary glands that secretion is made of a protein and when this protein comes out uh, it hardens when it gets exposed to air and uh, they see movement of a caterpillar uh, makes that secretion to make a cover around the caterpillar and that is called a cocoon and if the caterpillar inside it is known as pupa it uh, takes 25 to 30 days in pupal stage and uh, see uh, then uh, it, it undergoes pupa undergoes uh, metamorphosis and after metamorphosis adult moth comes and now it is ready for uh, uh, laying eggs now what is sericulture here we saw the life cycle of a silk moth here our main see farmers they rear silk worms for getting silk threads silk so the process of rearing silk worms for the production of a silk the process of a rearing of a silk worms for the production of silk is known as sericulture so now let us look into uh, the process the eggs are stored under optimal conditions of uh, humidity and temperature to facilitate hatching silk, uh, silk moth lays eggs these eggs are collected and uh, these uh, eggs are given uh, see a moderate uh, temperature and uh, humidity to facilitate hatching then newspapers are spread over to absorb excess moisture and uh, the after hatching silkworms are fed with the mulberry leaves for about uh, 20 to 30 days and uh, this is the picture in this picture it is shown that uh, they are kept in bamboo racks and mulberry leaves are provided and silk worms are then moved to small chambers of bamboo trays then after they stop eating mulberry leaves at that stage these silk worms are collected and kept in wooden trays bamboo trays these are the trays these are cocoons these are cocoons and they are kept in bamboo trays next then next step is collecting all these cocoons and putting them in hot boiling water what is happening when uh, uh, cocoons are put in hot boiling water water for obtaining silk fibers a pile of cocoons are kept under the sun or immersed in boiled or boiling water and these are the processes and uh, on boiling silk fibers they separate out they separate out from the cocoons because the sericin which was adhering the fibers which join the fibers together get dissolved in that boiled water and the process is called degumming then on boiling silk fibers separate out from the cocoons because the sericin which adheres the silk filaments together gets dissolved in hot water and the process is called degumming next is reeling separating and taking out of uh, uh, silk fibers silk threads the process of taking out the silk fibers or thread from the cocoons is called reeling special machines are used for uh, unwinding the thread and the fiber that is obtained by the process of reeling is known as rose silk and this is this process is called uh, reeling 
next step is coloring the uh, silk depending on the requirement the raw silk fibers can be dyed in various colors and then spun into silk threads and this is uh, colored dyed threads these are dried threads next types of uh, silk fibers there are mulberry silk tessar silk oak silk and kosa silk moga silk and these are silk fibers commonly found but uh, in india we have uh, mulberry silk obtained from uh, the silk moth called uh, bombyx mori and uh, see these are the pictures of uh, caterpillars in the world india is the second largest country the first place goes to uh, china and mulberry silk is the main variety of uh, uh, silk produce silk which is produced in india in uh, see in india andhra pradesh karnataka tamil nadu up assam madhya pradesh and odisha are other states in other states they produce major amount of uh, silk next health hazards same way uh, we have seen health hazards faced by farmers in uh, involved in a uh, wool industry same way farmers those who were involved in a uh, silk industry also face uh, so many kinds of hazards for example they have to deal with the uh, caterpillars they are worms uh, they are allergic. some uh, people are allergic to these kinds of worms and they have to uh, deal with the uh, hot boiling water they have to deal with the uh, dyes which are chemical So, so this may cause irritation in eyes and the boilers or sound of boilers may make them uh, see long long time use of uh, or uh, exposure of uh, these uh, uh, boilers uh, sound may cause uh, deafness and these are the health hazards let us see manual handling of the cocoons may lead to blisters cocoons may cause blisters peeled off skins or sometimes minor skin infections and the usage of chemicals or dye the silk may result in irritation of eyes infection of skin lungs and breathing problems inappropriate ventilation again high temperatures humidity and noise made by the machines in the factory can harm the general health of the workers before we wind up this session let's have a look into the points that we have discussed today we have discussed about wool and silk characteristics of wool animals which give wool and characteristics of silk and life cycle of a silk moth then sericulture i hope you have understood the lesson thank you